Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of The Metal Intent, the show where we get behind the intent of our favorite musicians, producers, friends, and we try to learn how we can navigate our own music journey. Fifth episode is a very special one because we have master producer, best friend, George Lever. How are you doing, George? I am not ready for this, but I'm good. <laughs> you are ready. I think you are okay. ready. Thanks. Um, my favorite part of that amazing intro is friend, because I think we're good acquaintances or, or even friends. Mm -hmm. And I think it is interesting for the people listening. How does that, how does, how did this actually come to be that we're cool and friends and stuff? Um, I started making really bad YouTube videos and you Wrong. were my cheerleader. Mm. Is that not where it started? No. I talked to you before that? No, it's that your videos are good. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, that's just opinion. That's why it was wrong. Okay, no, it's like, I have not spoken to you before YouTube. No, yeah, it, it is something like that. Is the, the way mm -hmm. I see it in my brain, and I've told you this, is, is my first encounter with George was the first encounter with George for many people, which was listening to The Offering by Sleep Token. Yeah. And, um, and that's my first encounter with George. That's the way I see it. And the way it happened for me was, wow, this shit sounds so good that the person who produced this, I will now manifest that person into my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bully my way into being their friend. It, it will happen. I don't know who he is. I didn't know who, who he <laughs> was yet. But yeah, yeah, it's, I say it jokingly, but it is actually real that um, you... It's, it's this funny way of saying it, like manifesting people into your life. It almost disregards the entire you part. Like I manifested mm -hmm. you into my life. <laughs> it's dumb, but it does exist where I do have something that I can share with you that you do want. And you have yeah. stuff that you can share with me that I want. And... Uh, mm -hmm. It's just an exchange of value, like everything else in, in music. I don't know. You know. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> you say you don't know, you know. It's just, I think, because um, we talk quite a lot, yeah. really. And I, I don't really talk with people. I put... We, bo we both put ourselves out there, but I find communication quite exhausting. Not because I'm an introvert, but because maybe I am an introvert. I haven't realized or decided yet. But um, when you get to a certain point of being available, putting yourself out there, you start multiplying the amount of people that want to connect with you. And that obligation, because you feel like you want to reply and you want to respond and you want to be um, there, it is tiring because it's another relationship that you take on in your life. Whereas the difference being is that I met you and noticed the effort that you wanted to go to, even just to have that initial conversation really early on. And I'm... Um, I respect when people are selfish like that, unashamedly like, because there's nothing wrong with being selfish as long as you are able to attend to the fact that you are owning it. Yeah. There's only, there's only a problem with being selfish if you're trying to like hide it as like, oh no, it's for your benefit. It's not just, just own up. Like everything, and because everything that we do has a selfish reasoning to it. Like for me, we're doing this podcast. I, we could, this could just be a phone call. But we're doing this podcast because it's visibility and I think this is going to be fun. So selfishly, I want to have a nice day today. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And there's, there's quite a lot of tangents from that. So bringing it back around, I could acknowledge and see 
And I didn't know at the, at the beginning whether it was intentional selfishness, but I respected that you were putting yourself out there in order to get noticed. And so then I was like, okay, it's not going to cost me anything in order to reciprocate and see where this is at. And it just turns out that you're not an asshole and that we get along and that we share. But the difference is that we share quite a lot of values. And I see quite a lot of not myself in you because that's quite, again, ego centric. Yep. It's I see a lot of values in you that are not um, related to your age. Thank you. So, for me, I think that's really impressive. I find anything like that where someone has managed to learn life lessons really early on and use them really, really impressive because there's still quite a lot of people that are quite old that are still children. And so when you see the reverse of that, for me, that's like a really big exclamation mark going like, don't, don't sleep on this, right? <laughs> um it doesn't mean that you know everything, but it means that there's something that I value in you, which is intrinsically you. And it's not a thing that you like, a, uh, it's not a skill. It's you being you, right. That I value. And so for me, I find that really rewarding because I have to surround myself with people that offer points of view that I won't, I, I can't think of because that's the only way that I can have balance. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you. First of all, that's, that's, right. that's my favorite five first minutes of any episode. It's people so talking, people, yeah, yeah, people talking good about me, man. Again, selfish, right? It, it is real and you got to acknowledge it. But I, <laughs> this is interesting and valuable for people listening because you can, you can bring the type of people that you admire into your life by by being cool and by having something that that person or type of people is interested in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to reach out to someone, firstly, just um, technically speaking, it has never been easier to reach out to anyone ever in no. the history of the world. So <clears throat> you're, you're, you're good on that. It's going to be yeah, technically easy. Yeah, you're saying? Yeah. Sorry. And you're able to, because before you had that six degrees of separation thing. Mm. And, and do you know about this? Not sure, no. Okay, so six degrees of separation is an, is an idea, a concept. And it's pretty true, is that you are only six people or six connections away from any other person in the world mm. at any given time. Yeah. So the internet has now made it so that that six degrees of separation doesn't really exist anymore because you can go straight to the person. Whether or not you're going to get noticed and heard is a completely other thing altogether. Yeah. But um, back in the day, back in the day, before <laughs> social media existed in its current evolution, there were people that literally had really well-paid jobs that were there just to go and make phone calls happen. They would go, so I would go to that person and I'd go, I want to talk to Elon Musk. And he goes, and that person would go, fine, I can get you that phone call with Elon Musk. It's going to cost this much because I'm going to need to spend this much time and this much resource. But that person will go and join all the dots for you and get you that phone call. doesn't mean that phone call is going to be any good, but that, that used to be their job. And the, if the, and the value there was that people that could make connections for you and make those conversations happen had value. Now that's been replaced with social media. But, you, but the sort of like hit and miss ratio is quite high. Yeah. Right, because then you realize that you maybe hit up the person that you want an opportunity with, and you're you're actually not special, at least to that person. You need to make sure that you don't end up on that punisher side. There's also punishing. There's also people mm -hmm. that will just... Because at the end of the day, even if George respects that I have my own selfish reasons, I do have something for him. I do have something for you that you do want. It's not that I'm a punisher and it's the recently I've been very icky about this, this kind of salesy concept of always thinking I live my life by thinking, how can the other person benefit from me? Like, what do I have to give to someone else? And it's a good way to live. When, when people overuse it, like salesly, it's kind of bad where they're like, they only say what's good for you. Oh, this is so good for you. This is so good for you. And they like, they never talk about what's the good part for them. And you can kind of tell that they're 
they're trying to cheat you out of something, even if what they and because what they focus on is just what's good for you. What's good for you? This is awesome for you because this is great for you because. And I'm like, ah, is, is it that great for me? So I get what so you're saying. That? So what's what's an example of that for you recently, without naming names or like putting anyone on blast? Yeah, like right. What, what's I an mean, example of that for you? I think us as us like musical influencers around the the size i am at and mm. maybe even you can relate um often underprice ourselves when it comes to the reach that we have we have i really believe influencers some people say like influencer marketing is in a bubble they say stuff like that like influencers are overvalued and a lot of them don't get the, the reach or the clicks that us brands need and stuff like that. And mm. I don't really think so. I think if anything, influencers are undervalued because as inexperienced people in the market, we we'll often underprice ourselves and brands can get great deals for our attention. And uh, I've, I've just received like very bad, very bad proposals. And the, they're bad. And then I see some of my friends, the same size reach audience, just flat out accept them. And, right. I, and uh, I see like they're underpricing themselves. And uh, I see the way that the brands presented those as like great value opportunities for us. And I'm like, yeah, some value, but we're creating a lot more value to the actual brand. Okay. But you're talking about when you get an email from a brand being like, hi, we have this new product coming out and we would really love to pay you to make a video to talk about the product to see if it generates sales. We think we can pay you X in order to get Y, but we'll also need to see the video beforehand and then we'll need to be able to like make some changes and blah, blah, blah. And then you feel like your art making a video on YouTube is, is a form of art, they've predetermined your value before even asking you what your effort is or what it looks like because, um, yeah, I mean, I get those emails. Right. And I reject them all. Yeah, that's the point. Within, the point. yeah, no, I have not done a brand deal yet. I guess neural comes close, but that's again the selfish thing is I want that connection. Yeah. I want yeah. I want to work with them closer. So that isn't a monetary thing. I think although, you know, Amp Sims and stuff are a dime a dozen, I like the way that that company thinks and I don't think it's going to stop at Amp Sims. I just think And so for me in five years' time it'll probably be the point in five years where that relationship's probably at the right point. Yeah. So yeah. otherwise, so coming back to your thing, where it's like, hi, can we pay you, what, $300 to do a, a review on blah, and then do, just do your thing. It's like, my thing takes me three days to do, and my time has, I'd rather not earn $300 and not do that. I would rather pay you to leave me alone, type thing. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then when other people take those deals on, it devalues the market because brands look at that and then they see a video for YouTube as a video for YouTube. It's not like there isn't this sliding scale, uh, sliding scale of like quality and outcome. They just see, oh, look, there's a video. It's a video at a certain amount of minutes and a certain amount of views. So therefore it's good. It doesn't matter whether the audio sucks or whether the person has cared about how they want to portray what they're doing. It's just a someone in a spare bedroom where you can hear the room and they're using the camera's on onboard microphone for everything. And as long as it got a really good hit point, it doesn't really matter to the brand, which is really weird because they are then affiliating themselves with that quality of output. And that's the part that they don't realize. They are paying someone for an output, but if that output isn't controlled or considered, they are then saying that we're okay with that. Right. And so when you reject that, you're saying, I care more than you do. Actually real. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. What was the what was the big point behind all this? It's like being underpriced because I wanted to come back to it, but I forgot. Well, you started the you you know you're getting the emails. We're talking about the valuing of something, and I asked you for an example, example of yeah. I asked you for an example of what that looks like to you when we're talking about relationship building and the value that gets offered in each direction. Yeah, there you go. That was it. Right. Because, I mean, it's better to talk about a good example. For me, the best example was what we did with Alexander. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm people listening on podcast, I am showing off my Caesar Handmade Guitars Stone Crusher J. And, um, I honestly think that, and I talked about it on the vid review video. The, again, review video that I did for the guitar. I, the only one I've ever done. I've never done something like this. Yeah, and you didn't, you didn't, you, neither of us are obligated to do that. Exactly. That's, mm -hmm. that's also a big point. It, it, it's a, it is a big point because Alexander did not come at us saying, how good it was going to be for us that we're going to have new guitars and they're like the best uh -huh. the custom made shit it's it's going to be super awesome he he did not if anything we no. initiated the conversation cuz we respected his work so much seeing his guitars and yeah. um and um it was a huge risk for him like business wise that could have been a really bad risk it, for him it to actually take. could it actually could have george mm -hmm. um alexander trusted us Hi. with with a price uh mm -hmm. trusting again our influence and that we would uh put his his good name forward with good content and showing his guitars in a in a good light and yeah. uh, it's honestly been <laughs> there's that trump gift where he goes to the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals maybe ever <laughs> right yeah but, but like the best the absolute best because yeah. if you agree with me we have like epic instruments these mm. instruments are, are just fabulous and i yeah. am i am really confident that we got alexander alexander's list for guitars to be made horrible english here but we got him orders right well i guess the difference also being is that I've played way more custom guitars than you have as well. Yeah. And so what I can tell you, like I've, you know, I've, the list is any guitar get good has owned. I've mm -hmm. played. Yeah. So the list is huge because he loves guitars way more than me because he's better at guitar than I am. Um, but there's been, you know, multiple demon S multiple black machines, multiple custom shop, anything. Yeah. And this, Oh, and PRS, Modern Eagles, everything. The fact that when... So it's a risk on two sides. And yes. I'm going to swing this back around, right? Because for us, any amount of money leaving our hands for something that we have not touched... Is risk. Not played, is risk. Even though it's not... Um, and I'm sure Alex will not mind us saying that it's not full price and it was like closer to artist deal it doesn't matter because that's still 100% more money being spent than you had expected to spend that month yeah. there's risk involved involved on both sides the fact that what we got is what we got um is a miracle it's it was dumb risk on both sides absolutely stupid dumb risk it is because it's not there's no there's no informed process there yeah. it's do you want to do a guitar yeah all right yeah okay money please and you're there going like <laughs> sure oh, hit the mic <laughs> like, okay like sick uh but it's the fact that we got what we got at, in the time frame in which it took also. to be made as well um i don't know if you have but you know i've ordered the bass and the bass is going to happen. Oh, you know are you hired? Project. Tell me. All right. Well, you're part of that. <laughs> bass. Well, you're part of that notion. Yes. Um, but the bass is going to happen. Um, I don't know what the time scale is for that, but we've agreed that it's going to happen and we're going to do the sort of like our version of a ding wall. 
pipe thing. Oh, yeah. Which is cool. We're just trying to find out if we can do the thing with the pickups that we want to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which will be really cool. Um, but I think, on the, and it's one of those things where I don't, if Alex can continue doing the same thing, there's no real reason, honestly, for me to buy another guitar from anyone else from this point on. And that's the risk that paid off for him. Yeah. Um, and then when we talk about brands, right? Oh, this is so, this is so perfectly closing the circle. Are you ready? It's Go. when you can start valuing the person that's on the other side, the brand doesn't really matter. Right? Yeah, man. So, okay. So before I started affiliating with Rode or Focusrite, I didn't have any brand alliance to them. But because of the result of the people that I've gotten to work with and get to know, I will never change. As long as those people are at that company, I won't change. And if they move to a different company, I'm changing. I'm following those people. Because yeah. the, it's uh, in this industry, it, the gear is somewhat important slash ish. The people and the connections are way more important. Boom, nice. close the circle. That How was that? yeah. That, guys, that was the fifth episode of the <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Absolutely. We got a friend out of Alex. I say that all yeah. the time. It's yeah. it's crazy that he's now building a space in Vienna and like I want to go visit. It's, yeah, and it's, it's all sick. because of the sales that we got him. <laughs> Can you imagine if I was being serious? <laughs> here's here's the thing. Here's the thing, it's not completely, but... No, there's probably some sales in there, but... Absolutely. And, and he, honestly, he, just... He made his own fortune with that, though. Yeah, right. And we've made our own fortune in great guitar. Like, mm -hmm. th th it's cool. The way you say, like, there's no reward without risk in, in anything. And no. it's interesting that it was... It, it's dumb risk... The thing we went on was like a great Instagram feed of beautiful instruments. And he went yeah. on our visibility and um, authority. It's, it's not the right word, but it's like the respect that we have within a community. That's what he trusted. And that's what we trusted. Yeah. And we, like you said, kind of a miracle, kind of a miracle. It is. Um, yeah, man. I also think, I don't know if you did, but for me, there was, I, I had a natural, a general curiosity about what he was doing anyway. So we, before we'd even spoken about building a guitar, I was just inquisitive because I wanted to know how things worked and I wanted to understand how he is where he is with his quality of work because yeah. it's very it's not common to see someone make something like that and just be unknown. Under without, the radar. Yeah. Right? And he could have stayed there. That's quite right. easily. You know, and there's probably quite a few other luthiers out there that mm -hmm. are in that situation that, who knows, they're probably one or two brand deals. I'm doing air quotes. Yeah, yeah. Podcast people. One or two brand deals away from elevating <laughs> their position within the market. Yeah. It does. It, it does come full circle, like I said, where if the listeners want to hit someone up, you have to have something to offer them. But if yeah. the brands or luthiers or the, the actual producer wants to hit the, the people of, or the influencers to do a deal, it's, it's the same thing. It, it, goes, it flows both ways. Mm. which is interesting and they also and it doesn't also the other thing that i've learned is that not each brand will respect and value your position in the market differently based upon their own bias yeah you know um i've had some really great conversations with brands i've had some really really bad conversations with brands where they've where we've spent two or three zoom phone calls going over stuff thinking that we're making progress and I'm connecting with them as a person only to be asked to represent them in a deal where it's weighted so f aggressively in their favor that you may as well buy the product from the shop if you like it. <laughs> yeah. 
you know? Yeah, like, just let me fucking buy it off <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll just, like, I might, I like it, but I don't want to give you advertising. And it's not because of the brand at that point. It's yeah. because of the person that you have to communicate with, right? Yeah. You know, you're so much of a fart sniffer that I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, great way. Let's stop talking about brands. Because, I mean, okay. it's interesting the way, with, the way that we came to brands was just talking about, talking about communication in between two parts and how everything yeah. is an exchange of value. And the, the practical example for a musician listener is a brand deal. It's, it's mm -hmm. the exchange of value that a lot of the listeners are trying to, to go for. But um, there's, there's many other ways. And one of them to just exchange value is the one that you uh, put yourself into, which was content. When you started making your content, it is an exchange of value where you're, you're, just, you're not funneling it to one person. You're funneling it to a lot of subscribers and watchers, which is arguably more efficient and builds you lots of different things like uh, a brand, get, get your name on, on people's minds. And I am wondering where, where are you at with content? Because I've been a George Lever subscriber from, from day one. Where am I at with content? Like, it, why isn't there more? Like, not really, but if that's your reaction, that also points to where you're at with content. Because, I mean, where are you at, like, as a creator? Like, are you enjoying mm -hmm. it? Are you getting out of it what you thought you would? Are you getting out of it stuff that you never imagined you would? So, that's, it's a very broad question, but I yeah. can unpack it. Um, YouTube is the, so I, I have a tendency to become obsessed with stuff, mm -hmm. not unhealthily, but it's kind of like trying to understand how something works. And then once I understand it, I then decide whether it's for me or not. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've done it with music. I've done it with, uh, before this, I was a graphic artist and photographer ish and website maker and although i really like design i really don't like working with people that need design work done um so that died pretty quick i say pretty quickly that was what i focused on when i was 16 all the way through to 21 that's pretty quickly flipped. yeah pretty quickly but in those ages that's quite a lot of time. that's like your whole that's, life that's, yeah that's your whole childhood yeah and before that all i wanted to be was a vet so I don't know where, oh. where the flip was. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and I just, I didn't get the qualifications in education to become a vet. So Whatever, vet. yeah. Whatever. I just own animals instead. Um, <laughs> and then, so yeah, the, the, the observation of trying to understand why something works the way that it does, do I agree with how it works, and can it be changed to suit the way that I perceive it? And then can I, based upon my perception, can I then recreate it, make it so that other people have the option of seeing it the way that I do? That's the process that's going on with YouTube because, and any visual media, because I work with, work with, I guess it is a work with URM now. Yeah. It was a, it was like a on off thing, but now there's like YouTube stuff, there's stuff behind their paywall doing mix, mix rescues and stuff like that, where that's another connection. Um, and I'm learning more about how to teach, basically, how to share, because the fundamentals of that are really complex. And being good at your job doesn't mean that you're good at explaining it. And then being good at explaining it doesn't mean that you're good at doing your job, explaining it, and then being on camera. And it also doesn't mean that you're good at being on camera, explaining it, doing your job, and then setting up everything and then editing it and making sure that you understand how light works within a room and you know you're doing six jobs I yep think. i don't know and so and then writing scripts and then understanding direction and then learning how to problem solve when you haven't gotten it right so the thing that happened with youtube and that i've gotten out of youtube is that i went into it not knowing and not expecting anything because i've learned from life is that if i have an expectation and that goes unshared then it's just going to end up in resentment 
Okay. Which is anything in life where you have an expectation and you can't share it or you don't share it and then that thing doesn't happen ends in resentment. That's that's why musicians end up upset with mixes ultimately is because they've been unable to share how they feel or what they expected their music to come across like and normally that's a feeling rather than an actual sound. Yeah. Um, and I'm working on a video to talk about that because that's that one brief concept is such a lot to unpack and explain and share with someone no. that I need more than 30 seconds to go over it and then show someone how I then approach it because actually their approach is really simple. You just change your stance. So creating content and where am I at with it is that I know what I want to achieve. I don't know if the music community within YouTube are ready to accept it. Mm -hmm. Based upon what they're used to. And it's not because I'm doing something radical. It's because I want to approach a subject in a way that it doesn't get approached because I have skills that mean that I can approach it in a different way. Yeah. I don't want to just do unboxings and product demos of and course. do the thing that everyone else does because then that just means that our subcategory of music within YouTube is just for sales. Whereas you look at something, and I've spoken with you the, about this anyway, the technology and the photography side of YouTube where people get to tell stories yeah. and show journeys. And it's not about like going, oh, I went to Thailand and then I had a camera. It's not that. It's just kind of like showing, being able to ex share your ex experiences in a way that visually is eclectic as opposed to just like, Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about this microphone that is exactly a microphone and it sounds like any other microphone, but now I need to tell you why to buy it. Here yeah. are the five reasons why you should buy this. It's rubbish. It's pointless. Right. And if I can then instead take that subject matter of, I'm going to do my job. I've been sent this microphone and this is how I'm doing my job anyway. And this microphone is involved. That's the end goal is to show someone how something fits into your routine or not. Yeah. And then that gives someone a literal and a practical point of view. However, the last year, I've not gone anywhere. So I can't do that. So then I've had yeah. to wait. So I've had to tell different stories and make different content because I can't go to a studio. I cannot be in a room with other people. And although now the laws are different, I am uncomfortable with that. So um, I'm, you know, it's going to take time, but I'm now better at telling stories and a better visual creator than I was. So maybe it's for the best. Who knows? Yeah. I don't fucking care. I can swear, right? Because I just swore. Please. Otherwise you're bleeping that out. Right. And no, I'm, I'm going to tell you where it was. <laughs> I don't care. But does that make sense? Yes. That, that does make yeah. a lot of sense. And I'm wondering, when you say that um, the, um, the recipient isn't ready to accept it, mm. you mean it in like, the context of what's happening on the platform, like what what our type of music listener is looking at on YouTube. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the average person that goes onto YouTube, not in general, but from our world, are searching for things that they want validation to buy. They want to be told it's okay to buy it, or they want to be told that what they just bought is good. Yeah. The thing that I want to be able to do is I want to show someone how to think for themselves. And yeah. use their own like thought process to decide. It's like with anything. If you had to go and buy a car, for example, you're going to test drive it and then you're going to think. Yeah. And you're then also going to read as much as you can about it. You're going to try and look up faults that might exist in the first five years um, and all this sort of stuff. And I'm only talking about this because two years ago I had to buy my first ever car and I had no idea about the process of yeah. how do I value a car. Exactly. Car doesn't just go brum. It, it kind of, sometimes it won't go brum and you won't know why. And is it, is it your <laughs> fault? And how do you avoid those things? Can you imagine approaching audio from that same point of view, but just being like, I just want to spend money. Why can't you just tell me where to spend the money? And that's and, how people do it. Right. And then, uh, and then if the microphone doesn't go, whatever sound a microphone makes, <laughs> it's your fault. Right? It is, because you're not informed. Because you didn't tell them that it might break. Stuff breaks. Stuff is wrong. All the time. All the time. And we get given a period of time in order to decide whether it's good or not. And anyway, 
the reason why I'm like they're not ready for it is because they don't no one really at this moment in time wants to think for themselves because they're preoccupied selfishly with the things that they are more ready to dedicate time to. The simplest answer is don't spend money. Don't buy anything. Yeah. And until you can value the time that you're going to have to put into it, don't do it. Because if that's how you feel about wanting, I don't know, validation for spending money, that impatience will bleed into other things that you might want to try and do professionally. Mm, you're yeah. just gonna, you know, flip to the next plugin to resolve a problem. The problem is you, not the plugin. <laughs> yeah. You know? And people aren't ready to hear that. It's no. it's um, strange. Yeah. Because like there, there there's a point of view where if people aren't ready to hear it, then they probably need to hear it, like right now. But it's up to us yep. to like figure out how to use the and this I is I think what you're getting at, how to use the medium to to make that message work. Yeah. Yeah. And the easiest way that I've found so far and what it's getting to is like T T L D R videos hmm. and the format of I can tell stories as long as I get to the point as quickly as possible and I don't overstretch. People don't really care about detail. They just want to know about the headline. And then if they need to about, know about the detail, then they will allow you to go into detail. Yeah. But up until that point, it's like if someone tries to tell you a funny story and they tell you like every single detail about everything <laughs> that was going on and you're there just like, you just <laughs> get to the hurry. point. Yeah, I was like, oh, I had such a funny thing happen to me at work today, and they're going to tell you about what was like happening in the shop, and you're there going like, can you just <laughs> say the thing that happened and get to the next and, bit? And it was funny, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they always and they always finish. Oh, but you probably had to be there, and you're there going like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there, and you're there going like, you've just wasted right. so much. And, and do you know what's going to happen next time? Is next time I'm just next time you're going to be like, oh, do you want to know about my day? It's like, no, no, <laughs> stop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons I do the podcast because you can say it now like this. Yeah, you couldn't in a video. So no, no, trying out trying out different contexts. Because when would you have said all that you've just said? In no other Probably on Instagram, maybe. Okay. Yeah, but even then, it's an Instagram caption versus, I don't know if we're at yeah. 20 minutes now or 30. It's it, trying different contexts for all content creators. Talk, even if you're uncomfortable with them, if you're uncomfortable with showing your face on video, try it. If you're uncomfortable talking on podcasts, which I am and was, try it. Because you're going to get different conclusions out of trying all the different mediums you're going to express yeah. yourself differently and you're going to enlighten yourself in different ways and enlighten your audience in in different ways like i think so context but it's also like yeah you know these 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 formats for storytelling and sharing information they're so young that's right we take they're them young. for granted like i was born with them but they're young they are well, they are. And it's the same way that, you know, we know when a film is a film and we know when a TV show is a TV show and we know when a documentary is a documentary. And we're based upon that stuff. We know what level of attention and um, dedication we need to give them. TV shows, probably not so much because it's one story drawn out over a season and a film is, you know, you go, all right, it's two hours. I'm just going to enjoy this. And the level of production is normally a bit different. And documentaries, it's well, the only documentaries anyone ever watches has David Attenborough in, so you, of course you're going to pay attention, aren't you? But when we look at stuff that's basically short-form entertainment, we're getting all the way down to TikTok now, where it's like, what, 20, 30 seconds yeah, of entertainment? Right. And you can't share information that way. I'm seeing people try and share information on TikTok rather than use the platform for what it's for because they think they need to be visible on that platform, and I don't think that really works out. Like, I'm not on... I'm not active on Twitter because I don't understand it. So therefore, if I spend time on it, it's going to be more damaging than it is good for me. Mm -hmm. There's no need. I don't need to be part of that conversation. And the same for TikTok. I'm not a person for TikTok. I, I, no. I'm not female to begin with. And I, it's just not going to work. I'm not. I'm, it's, 
I'm just going to be completely like, I'm not a boomer, but I will be a boomer in, in TikTok world because I'll just be looking at it going, why, why is this? Yeah. Instagram, I get. Instagram is like the, the dyslexic's ideal social media because it's just like, ah, oh, nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you even think about it, Instagram is even fucking shorter than TikTok. You could be looking at a picture for five seconds and quit. TikTok, you'll, you'll be there 15. <laughs> really? Yeah, you will. I haven't used it. I've, uh, I've seen other people use it and I'm just there going, this is, it's the, like, the social media equivalent of that new Japanese metalcore. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like the ADHD what core. What is happening right, right. at me? Pale Dusk is the band. Yeah. Shout out Pale Dusk. They are sick, though. Shout, out, are so a, sick. shout out ADHD core, for real. Yeah. No, any band that can write that and pull it off, like that, I'll, I'll applaud them because I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah. I'd just, I'd open up a DAW and go, all right, do I just start punching the keyboard or what? Yeah. It's interesting. And it still sounds cohesive. And it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of the, the lesson on, on TikTok. Cause there's content and then there's context. And, and I just talked mm. about this. You can, ha you can have the same message and uh, you have all these different platforms. You have video on YouTube. You have a 10 minute video on YouTube. You have an hour long podcast. You have an Instagram photo with a caption. You have a 15 second TikTok video. And uh, as creators, it is, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna use the word our job. It's our job to figure out how we can um, adapt ourselves to these different contexts if we want to make the most out of our message and figure out which one works the best and prioritize that, of course. But I've always said that as creators, we owe it to ourselves to try every context because it, it gets different insight. I think that's fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, for me, the perfect way for me to do my job would actually be in person. To teach exactly. Anyone. For example, one-on-one -on -one teaching or small classes or big classes. Yeah. Yeah, we don't think well, about I'm it anymore because we have the internet scalability. But it, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I've thought about it. You know, do you remember that periphery thing that they did, the songwriting camp? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that for me, yeah. if, I could, if I could do that, that would be the best way for me to teach directly anyone anything because it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's. Yes, yes it is. Right? And it, um, having eight hours in order for someone to be like, oh, okay, so how do we do this? And me to be able to go like that and just show them or then encourage them to then recreate it. That's the ideal environment for me to be in. But people don't value that because it costs money mm -hmm. to do. And it, it would cost quite a lot of money to do, which is why I haven't done it yet, because I believe I would have to build my own perceived value online yep. first before I can get away with doing something where price of entry for a week of education is a grand. Of course, 1500, you know, because yeah. that's I there's so much to consider with catering and, and studio rental and musician hire, because that would be the only way that I could do a practical explanation of something. Of course. Up until that point, YouTube is free. So there you the go. The thing that people are going to deviate towards is the thing that costs them time, not money. Not money. Yeah. Which is weird. Valuing money over time. But yeah, the few things, if you do it, I want to be the guitarist. You're going to track me. That's going to be sick. Cause well, you're coming, like, when, when everything's available, you're coming here, right? As soon as air doesn't kill you, that's the way you say it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll do stuff, but I, I can imagine that you'll be, you would be here for an amount of time and we can, you know, ruin our social media platforms together. It's going to be so sick. Like, you, <laughs> you, you grab my Instagram and I grab your Instagram, we just fucking go... <laughs> go crazy yeah it's just gonna be like loads of really weird instagram stories of me in the shower uh i don't know there you go okay he said it fuck he said it 
<laughs> but it's going to be like they shouldn't have made phones waterproof. I'm just I mean, saying, like, if they don't want you to be sending videos of yourself singing in the shower to your closest friends, they shouldn't have made phones waterproof. I know. It's it's it, that that makes all all the sense in the world. Otherwise, why else would they make them waterproof if it wasn't for that? For the shower, because why are you going to go swimming with your phone? It's the shower. It is the shower. Right. It's like, oh, it's for accidents. It's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's for a, memes, isn't it? <laughs> dropping it on the <laughs> toilet. Okay. So here's a, here's a good, maybe final point. This okay. podcast's name is almost certainly to be credited a little bit to you. Because okay. the word intent, it was probably on my mind at the time from, from having conversations with you. And um, how we talk about it a lot pertaining to music, but just the key to, to being whatever you want to call it, and all of those successful, fulfilled, happy. Um, f- fulfilled is the word. Is if you have intent when you're doing something. Because maybe the best way to put it is the negative way, where if you're doing something and you don't know why, you're, 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 getting, you're getting nowhere. Because mm-hmm. if you don't know why you're doing it, how do you know what you're trying to get out of it? You're just doing it. So intent is key. And um, what do you think about intent being key? Why is that something that is on mine and yours is mind what's an example what's a bad example what's a good example <clears throat> pardon me so yeah. i use and deviate to the word intent because purpose is immediately filmed uh filmed no immediately filled with obligation people believe one is linked to the other if you have a purpose or there is a purpose for you doing something then you have an obligation to do it intent yeah. is a word where for me it it's about action or the choice of inaction it's it's making a decision yeah. it means that you have taken the time to understand the how the why and you wish to be able to manipulate those values into the thing that you create or choose to not. So for me, it's understanding, it's, a, it's about as much understanding your output as your input. So for me, intent is, I go to bands and I go, how do you want someone to feel? Yeah. Because for me, music has to strike something for me to care. Otherwise, it's McDonald's. Yeah. Right? And I, with how I, I'm, I'm going to keep going with the food analogy, with yeah. how I choose to eat, I want to give myself nutrition that is something that I enjoy, agree with, and doesn't just serve the purpose to be full. I understand that not all music is designed to make this happen and for that purpose. But I can also choose to not interact with that. So then my world is just filled with music that I feel has a value beyond being music yeah um and that is hard to discuss because sometimes you come across people that have never thought about things in that way Mm -hmm. and that's okay it is because and they may never do they don't have to do anything no one has to do anything in life no you can just exist and then not exist and that's completely okay. Whereas, and the same happens with music, it can just exist and then choose to not exist. But for the stuff specifically that I 
am entrusted to interact with, so the music that I get to enable people to make, I want it to be, I want for it, because again, for me selfishly, what I want is not so important, but I want for it to be able to strike a chord with someone and, and evoke something in them or for them that they can't get from somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, you have to decide that that's going to happen. Yeah, it needs to be intentional. Sometimes it will happen by accident. It will. Because you, you can mm -hmm. never determine how someone's going to interpret what you did. It's always a two-way thing. You, you think you're trying to make someone feel a certain way, and they might feel a completely different way. That's, that's just art for you. It's, but, sure. but you don't do yourself a, a favor if you're not being intentional about it. What do you think something looks like Without intent, if intent was stricken from the record. I'll, I'll tell you what it looks like. I see it all the time amongst my peers. It looks like, and, and no shade to anyone mentioned, it looks like GGDP4 submission audio archetype Nolly test 2 published on my Instagram. It's like, and, and here's the thing, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. A lot of people won't know. Yeah, it's like my old SoundCloud. It's... Okay, okay, for example. So, so you, you know, know it probably way better than I can even explain. Oh man, like, so I don't even know if it exists anymore. My Everyone just go fucking SoundCloud, George Lever, just try it. Yeah, Please it's try really, it. If, if my old mixes are on there, it's pretty... Inspiring, terrible. yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, no, if this guy can go... From being that bad to <laughs> that's slightly what I was less bad. Say. That's great. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's see. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to talk about it. Um, you don't have to. No, because a, a version of it has to exist at some point. Exactly. Um, those products are designed. They're not McDonald's, but they are the equivalent of. HelloFresh. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't mean the products. I mean the kind of things that people do with the products. No, but okay. So HelloFresh, these, these subscription meal kits, right? That uh -huh. you get in the post that have a recipe that come with them. They have the opportunity to be incredible yeah. meals. They also have the opportunity to be burnt and ignored and oh. go off. Yeah. So those, those meals can exist in any state. It depends on your interaction with them. So that's what I'm on about with these. I see. The products that Get Good makes, uh, Ermin, etc. They can all be really great, or they can also be really bad. Which is where the intent comes in. Because some people will interact with them and just go, well, if I just load it up and then I do nothing. Yeah. I'm now Get Good. Yeah. No. And... <laughs> Yeah, kind of not, mate. I'm really sorry. If you buy his stuff, nice. Uh, yeah, great purchase. <laughs> good decision. Absolutely. But you do have to try a bit. Please. But, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. You know. <laughs> but it, it's so it's so real. It's so real. What I, and you, you even made a, a great point about the intent when you're actually using the fucking product. Like, it, it's, it's also huge. It is also huge. And the one I was even getting at more is that, like, your goal, if your goal is just to create music and to have that be recognized and to be able to, to have some living off of that so you can make more music... And you're doing something that is called GGD submission test for part two, part five in Japan, the sequel, like mm -hmm. final, 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 mixed by a cat, mastered by a dog. Like, what? Mm. It, where's, where's your intent, man? Like, why are you, are you just posting those clips on Instagram because everyone else does? Do you, do you then wonder why you're not satisfied with, with music? 
I bet mm. a lot of people do. I don't know. So then what's the solution? Right. The solution is thinking long and hard. Eh? Why? What is your intent? Why in the first Why? place do you like or think you like making music? I, I do think, again, full, full circle. First, you find mm. out selfishly why. Like, why do you like it? Why, why are you gravitating towards this? If, if a lot of people, if they think long and hard, it might just be because they, because they're mimicking something else that they see. It might not even be music for them. It's just what they've seen all the time their peers doing, and they're trying to do that. And that's completely fine. But the thing is, giving it that long think and, uh, and figuring out, like, what is your, your intent? Because that's the description of the show. If you find your why, you can find your how. So, the easiest way to find your why, apart from thinking... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I have no idea what you're about to say because you said apart from thinking. Apart from thinking. <laughs> is be comfortable and become really comfortable and very familiar with intentionally making mistakes. Because you... and So you know how I was saying with YouTube, I went into it with no expectations. Yeah. I didn't have an intent when I did that. Okay. Apart from make a video. And I went in with the process of, I have to understand this before I can even make a decision. So, and I've met a lot of people, obviously, that don't understand how intent works. Because some, for some of us, we value things differently. And we value those things almost intuitively, as if they have a value beyond others perceive. So then the process of if you're entering into a new area of creation and you don't know how to value it and you don't know how to value yourself and you don't know what you want to do, be comfortable with the fact that you're not going to make it perfect and be comfortable with that in order to find out what you do like about yourself and what you make, do it a lot. Do it until you really don't like it and then you know, then you just have information. And then you can start filtering it out. And then with that information, even if you don't know yourself inherently what your intent is, you have evidence to show you what your bias is. So then you can start delineating. So maybe there is a subcategory to the, is it, it's like to how to learn intent with Joao is uh, how to even start that process in the first place. Yeah, right. And um, it's not binary between think and do. No. That a lot of people, a lot of people, someone can get caught in thinking a lot and not doing anything and also get caught up in just doing and not thinking enough about the... It's both. It is both. That's, and that's why, you know, I don't make... I say make loads of stuff, make loads of mistakes. Yeah. There's not a lot of content on YouTube because all the videos that I make that are mistakes are in the bin. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't upload them. For every one video that is online, there's probably five that didn't go online. No way. Yeah. No. Pretty much. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, but it's because I go into the process being like, I want to make a video about this and I'm going to see how it looks. And I know the process now. I know how to film it. I know how to decide when to do which bits. And then I sit down and I'll look at the first talking head and then I'll just go, nah, no one's going to sit through this. I made this video for me, but it won't work for someone else. Mm. There's a video about uh, the, the week when I had the Adams and the emotional distress I went through <laughs> as I a result of I remember that, yeah. Mate, I was not happy. <laughs> I'm happy now, but I was not happy. That's, that's fucking amazing. And there's like, there is a 15 long minute video of me 
<laughs> like Jim Carrey having like a meltdown a <laughs> about speakers and just being like, not fair. <laughs> I'd fucking watch. That. It's not comfortable. Exactly. It's I'm not, not looking for a comfortable. Yeah, but you like Schadenfreude. I mean, a lot of people might. <laughs> it's weird, you know, because you're, you're like, the, the audience won't like it. Like, you're deciding for the audience. We could just put it out uh, there and let the audience decide. Uh, I'm deciding for the audience because I've seen the comment section. Okay. And I'm going like, <laughs> and I'm like, I already know. And if in here's here's the thing, right? Because of, <laughs> and this is how it works. If you disagree, leave a positive comment. Say anything. Just be more vocal than the negativity, because the people that like stuff are the are the silent majority. Yep. And that means that you end up tailoring what you make as a result of the people that are there fart sniffing and like saying, oh, you should mix in the sky. Like it's it just can happen. Yeah. And then you just you're there going, well, I'm not going to expose. Like, so for me going through that with the speakers, it was real. Like trying to being like questioning the fact that um, I didn't know whether I was actually good at mixing or not because I couldn't mix on these other speakers. Right. And I was like, well, um, and it's the stupidest thing being like sat in front of a pair of speakers, which sound fantastic. But anytime I tried to work on them, I was just there going like, mm, you know that like, uh, it was just dial up noise in my head. <laughs> yeah. Just like, just at some point, my, my brain, it will click and it didn't. And I had them for two weeks and I yeah. thought they sounded great. And you heard the result. Because I sent you a mix where yeah. I did it on one and it sounded fine. But then as soon as I moved back, there was just, and it's not even tangible in words. There is a quality that as soon as I'm back home that goes, oh, this is George. Mm. And it shouldn't <laughs> be in the speakers. But. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. And so then I filmed that process of me <laughs> being there going like, shouldn't be in the speakers. Technically, they're flat. It shouldn't matter. But here I am disagreeing with that fact. And I can't prove it because I can't share the music. So I'm just going right. to be here for 15 minutes <laughs> ranting about speakers, opening myself up to the opportunity for someone to be like, maybe you're just not that good at mixing then. And it's just like, all right, mate. Fine. I think I, I get quit. it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got you know? you to send me that. That's, that's funny. Um, no, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll show you it when you're here. Okay. Yeah. So that I don't get and that don't have access to it whenever I want. <laughs> That's leaving <laughs> Just, you, making you very uncomfortable. I, I'm not, no, I don't, I genuinely do not care. It's just the fact that it has no value because people, I can't. Then why do I, I want to watch it? Because you know me. Hmm. Because you know me i send you videos of my cats you know my <laughs> sense of humor right so you know objectively how that exp that uh um expression of me is not completely me it's just me deciding to be a child right however if that is someone's first interaction with me okay. on the internet that is 100 percent me that is all <laughs> i do and uh that's how i make all my decisions i i just shout at myself you know, you do. and all the time, like constantly losing my voice at how annoyed I am at myself. <laughs> Bad George. Bad. <laughs> Just, you know, um, lying on the floor of the studio, staring at my skylight going, why? <laughs> I see. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I hope so. It, it's... Otherwise people are going to have clicked off. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> My podcast listeners are the people that, again, really care about the, about the small stuff. Like we said, just context. If people are in it for, for an hour and for listening, they do care. And, and they will appreciate. And, they have uh, to. 
They fucking. Otherwise they get. Otherwise they get no more podcasts. They fucking have to. <laughs> and even they don't even have to. Because I enjoyed myself this past hour. <laughs> Again. Oh uh, yeah. This is. I I prefer this. Maybe we should make all our phone calls like this because oh. I like being able to see your face. <laughs> oh. And we record them all. Yeah. And yeah. then we'll just we'll upload a website. Upload a website. Oh my damn, George. <laughs> Yeah, where's that coffee? You're not, you're not sen making senses. I oh, know. <laughs> um, so the the caffeine thing, it doesn't mean that I make sense. It's that my brain is faster than my it's mouth. Just <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'm here <laughs> slow poke mode, just trying to recover. Do you even? Are you still recovering from that session? Kinda, and and a lot of. It's, it's day three, man. I know. And it's not, that's the excuse I give. So for people listening, I was just on a few weekends covering, uh, covering, um, recording a band. Shout out Soul Despair. I love my kids. Sounds good. And yeah, it sounds pretty metalcore, right? And the songs yeah. sound great too. And I'm used to, and you guys see it, I work by myself, like all the time. I just work the by dream. myself. Yeah. And as much as I fucking enjoy just working with other people and getting their music to become like something real out of their brains into an MP3 file that can enter someone else's brain, that's just the, that's just the best thing in the world. Still draining and tiring. <laughs> Absolutely draining and tiring. And it's not that it's just that. Then it sends you into a spiral of you yourself being drained and tiring and doing more draining and tiring things. Yep. And having to, to just yank yourself out of it. Because I almost texted George saying, I'm not doing this today. <laughs> that would have been fine. And it would have been fine. Yeah. But I personally know, this is a lesson from, from podcast one with Tobias, which was about discipline as a musician. I know that if I make this, in, again, intentful, starts to uh, an uptrend of doing more productive things that I, I, I can start to get back into an uptrend. But I do need to force it. And like George said, just not be afraid of it being a mistake, which you don't even know what a mistake sure. is. Like I have a different rhythm today than the past episodes. And that's not a mistake. It's a different episode. Sure. And it'll make, make way more sense if they're watching your face. Yes. If you're, yeah. I mean, uh, people might know my voice from, from where? Live streams? And, uh, and saying, Gent the subscribe button <laughs> on the end of the video. Gent the subscribe button. I do say that. I do say that. Wow, dude. Yes. But I'm not, I'm not criticizing you, but I'm like, does that work? Yes. People hit the <laughs> subscribe button. I, it's funny because oh, have you never watched an end of my videos? I see Chant the subscribe button and then I play. I don't it. watch the end. I come. I come in. <laughs> what is he I say, say hi. I show my support. And I, I tell you how good you're looking. And then normally I have to go and have dinner. Yeah, but I tend to stay for like 10, 15 minutes. But when you're there, <laughs> and this is the selfish thing, okay? Yeah. When you're there tabbing out, and I'm there going like, I'm not going to be able to have a riff around with Joao. I don't want to distract him. Yeah. Because like at this moment in time, I want him to give me all the attention yeah, because yeah. I'm George. And I, what? I'm just saying what's in my head. It of means course. nothing. And it's like, well, he's not going to give me all the attention, so I'm leaving. <laughs> no, we are. And it's, but it's also like, I also can't expect that attention. He'll, he'll like, we'll say hi and I'll be like, I'll do what I can to say goodbye before I go just on the off chance that he can see it. And then that's enough. Like, but for me to be there going like, give me all your attention. Stop yeah. doing your job. Listen to me. That is not a zero. Am, that is a one. I am, I am the show now. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be completely unreasonable. But my brain still goes, but what if? What if this one time <laughs> he does? And then it's, it's 15 minutes of Joao and George. And then that's what it becomes. Yeah, I bet it doesn't happen. Um, so <laughs> we all we all <laughs> fantasize about that. It's again, yeah. it's a fucking, it's a yet another context live streaming, yet another oh, yeah. one. 
just yet another one. I haven't done it yet. George streams. Who wants to watch that? Let's go. Well, I mean, like Instagram is enough. Doing an hour okay. live stream on that. Yeah, pretty easy to set but, up. Well, yeah, I I do that. No one can hear what's happening, but they all think it sounds good, and because so then it, no one can really tell if I'm bad. It does. Oh, by the way, just I need to. I need to. And you've probably had this idea too. When are we making the phone compressor plugin? Just you. I already exist, doesn't it? No way. <laughs> no, it's, seriously, you can you can imitate it, but it's not it's not it's not anything other than uh, you know that talkback limiter. Yeah, I was gonna say that, like Dan. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 essentially that it's a high ratio limiter, and you can hear it with a long release. Yeah. Um, the you don't you're not an iPhone person, but. No, but I know I've the also, sound difference, believe me. Yeah. However, <laughs> this is the level of nerd. Do it. There is now a limiter before uh, the speaker output. Yeah. In the iPhone, and I can hear it. But if I play music that's too loud too soon, it kicks down and then it releases back up. Yeah, it starts doing iPhone. this, like this. Yeah, and I'm there going like, it just got to the good bit. You playing it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it didn't used to be like that. You used to be able to annihilate the speaker on your phone, and they, it would be like, yeah, fuck me up. <laughs> and now it's like, no, we need to protect you. <laughs> yeah, but I, do, I know that. I know that. Yeah. It's cool. When you play a, like a one-shot sample, there's the attack time. L lets the, it lets like the attack go through, and then it... Do you know what we'll do? What? I have talked to a particular drummer about doing this. Okay, cool. An iPhone drum library. Yes. We you know. We gotta. We like a proper a good one rather than the, the silly one that I, I remember did that. when I was my house was broken. That. Yeah. Um but like a proper one that's supposed to like sound good as one shots that are there for blending rather than a main kit. Yes. There you go. I'm back in the studio in May. I'm going back to Middle Farm in May. So maybe I'll try it then. That's cool. I have a George sample that I use on all my mixes. Which one's that? It's the m snare middle farm distorted smash effects. Oh, what? The really long one? Yeah. The one that's in spirit box and stuff, which is funny as fuck. Yeah. 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 But I used it before it. I'm not copying Neil the mix. There's no. a version of that, which I haven't sent you, where... It starts like that, but the middle has been time stretched, so it starts doing like the matrix sound. Oh, how's yeah. how's that useful? It just sounds like it's just a different texture. It just doesn't sound normal. So it's just like the snare's going getting stretched down a tunnel, but it's yeah. also like um, there's not enough bit resolution, so those individual steps are getting stretched out and grained yeah. and stuff. So it sounds like synthesis. It's not, you know, it's not a thing to be heard. It's just like a, it's a similar effect to when you use a, a low resolution reverb. So something that's intentionally like eight bit or less, mm -hmm. but I don't know how many of those exist. Um, a really good example of this. I'm old. Um, <laughs> DLA on some of his older mixes uses a reverb by I think it's by Sony or something it's like it's like one of the very first hardware rack units and it sounds bad yeah but it's really particular because of the low resolution it just has this modulation to it that is different and it sits in a different way so that was the reason why I did that was me trying to be like oh, what if I can make my own CLA bad reverb, reverb. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work but <laughs> But again, you you were in, you were intentful with it. There was this. Well, yeah, intent. I was just I was there like, what if that's where the money is? It, it's not okay. But but you tried. Where the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you tried it, man. All right, I think this is a good place to end today's show. Probably the longest episode so far. We just have fun talking to each other. Yeah, man. Which is which is sick. So I usually ask, where can people find you? Where do you want people to find you, George? Normally roaming the streets of Somerset. Yeah, so I mean, you want to go there in the pouring, five. pouring rain. Looks good today, though. It's really sunny. 
it's been really like no clouds for the last couple of days, which is Great. which means this is summer now. And now it's over and then it'll be over. Right. And we'll have like three or four days of summer and then it's gone. But no one tells you when that's going to happen. So this year it's in April. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So uh, Instagram is just my name, George Lever underscore G1. I think YouTube's the same. You can tell how professional I am is because I don't even know my username handles. But if you just tend yeah. to search my name, I tend, I'm kind of the only one that exists until someone else exists with the same George Lieber G1 pseudonym. Yeah. Pretty easy to find you, man. And through I think so. the epic music that you work on. Thanks. So, yeah. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me.